Hi friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow Tarot. And here we go with day three of my highly compressed 31 days of tarot, where I'm putting it into seven days. Let's do it. Question nine, what was a memorable reading that you had in 2019? Um, and I have to say that my most memorable reading in 2019, and I'm not, I'm not gonna give any specific details about this whatsoever, because I don't do that obviously, but I had a reading uh, it was an online reading that I did for somebody that I didn't know and had never read for before. And um, it was one of those situations where the cards gave me just a super clear message about something. You know, it was the person had asked about this specific situation in their life and the cards gave me a message about the potential root cause of that situation that was like so overwhelmingly clear, but it was also one of those things that's um it's kind of a tough thing to talk about it's one of those things where you don't you really are afraid to say it in a way because it's one of those things where if it's if, if it's not true like then you feel like kind of an asshole so um but it, it, i mean the message was so clear and i had to trust myself and go with my gut and 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 say what i was seeing because that's you know when people get a tarot reading from you that's what they're looking for I mean you have to really give the unvarnished truth in a sensitive way but I mean you have to that's what that's why they're doing it um and so I did and was terrified until I got feedback from that person that uh basically what I had seen in the situation was exactly right on um and uh you know it it, it just it really validated again that feeling that I talked about, you know, in a couple of, one of the uh, discussions from a couple of days back, which I think was one about what you've learned from tarot over the past decade, um, that you do have to trust your intuition. And if your intuition is telling you something, you have to go with it because there's something really powerful there. And it, it, to me, I don't, it doesn't really matter if you, like, I think for some people, they believe more that it's a message from their guides. For me, I tend to believe more in that it's something about the human brain that, you know, we have this really unique power of sort of discerning patterns or clues or, you know, being able to, uh, you know, see a picture um, assemble itself from a, a small amount of information, which has its drawbacks, namely like every conspiracy theory that's ever been believed by anybody. But, um, but it also gives you this really powerful ability to intuitively discern things if you trust what your gut is actually telling you. And um, that particular reading was memorable for me because of that. You know, I really felt like I was going out on a limb in my interpretation and saying, this is what I think is actually going on here. And then getting that feedback of somebody saying, yes, that is in fact exactly what's going on here um, was really it was really validating to that belief. So day 10, question 10 of 31 days of tarot. So this question is share some of the long lost decks in your collection that you'd like to reconnect with. So the first one that I want to talk about is the golden tarot by Cap Black. Um, and I've had this deck for a long time. This is one of the decks that I think I got in like the mid to late 2000s. So I think I've had this deck for more than 10 years. Um, so, um, but I don't use it as much nowadays. I think just because when I got the Touchstone Tarot, I found that I connected to the Touchstone Tarot better than the Golden Tarot. It just felt more personal. The Golden Tarot has always felt, like this is gonna sound kind of weird, but this deck feels kind of political to me. Like, I, was it, or that's, that's the wrong word. It feels like it's a deck about the wider world. It's like not necessarily about me, it's about like the world and what's going on in the grander scheme of things. Um, I don't know why it has that feeling, but it just kind of does. And um, so, you know, so I, I just, I didn't use it as much as the Touchstone Tarot, even though it's a really great deck and I'd love to use it more. And um, so, you know, this is one of those ones where it does feel like, despite the fact that I've had it for so long, I I, I should use it more, um, I guess is, is, is all, I, all I can say, because I, I love the artwork of it. And the feel of it really does have a, a unique quality that um, I think I, I think could you know makes it very useful in a lot of ways, and I should use it more for the things that 
I think it's useful for. Um, another deck that is long lost in my collection, which it actually is interesting because it's a deck that I owned super, super early. I think it's, it's pretty sure it's actually the first deck I ever owned um, when I first started my tarot practice and I couldn't use it and I got rid of it. And I don't remember what I did with it. Um, gave it away or sold it or something. I don't know, but I didn't have it anymore. And then like forgot it existed until I saw it again on Amazon like last year and was like, holy crap, I owned that deck at one point and I bought it again. And so now I have a copy of it again, but because of that, I'm considering it a long lost deck in my collection because we're talking long lost, like 17 years ago, long lost. So um, that is the um, legend, the Arthurian Tarot by Anna Marie Ferguson, I think is her name. And um, this is an Arthurian inspired tarot. I have trimmed it and written the words at the bottom just because there's huge, huge borders on this deck. But I think the art artwork is very beautiful. It's just, it's a very sort of like washed out watercolor. So when there's big borders, the artwork just kind of gets lost, but it, it pops a lot more when you trim it. And um, the guidebook to this is really good. And um, it's interesting in how it connects um, Arthurian legend to tarot and I think it does a really good job of it actually and so I would like to get back into using this and reconnect to sort of my interest in Arthuriana and um really you know kind of dive back into this one um and I also I think it's beautiful and I think it's really cool and like I said it's you know when I first started reading tarot I feel like the concepts of tarot and then layering another story on top of it was just too much for me to absorb. But this one, um, I, you know, now that I am a more experienced reader, I think I could really connect to it and really enjoy the Arthurian aspects of it. So, um, so it's a really cool deck. So that is Legend, the Arthurian Tarot by Anne-Marie Ferguson. The final deck on this list is another one that I've had for a pretty long time. Um, so this is, the Mythic Tarot, um, and this is not the new Mythic Tarot, this is like the original Mythic Tarot. Um, this is, I think, an edition that was published in like the mid 2000s, I think, but it is still the original artwork. Um, and uh, this is another one where um, I just, I, I haven't used it as much recently, but again, it's a special deck. It's got a really good guidebook. The way that it layers, you know, myths on concepts from the tarot is really cool it's really interesting it works really well you know i know that this is a this is a big deck for a lot of people um and it, it, it it's 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 really cool and i just I haven't used it as much in like the last couple years i guess and um and i really like to get back into using it again i think i need to reread the guidebook um more than anything and just just get myself back into it but I, I love this deck. I love the artwork of it. Um, it's, it's, an, it's one that I do think that I really want to reconnect with. I always, um, since I was a kid, had a massive fascination with um, Greek mythology and the job that was done in terms of connecting Greek myth to tarot in this deck is it just, it's just really beautifully done. Like it, it's, it works so, so well um, and I, th I think it's just a great deck. So, um, so I really, I think I, I really need to reconnect with this one. So day 11 of 31 days of tarot, in my compressed version, uh, is show us your favorite depiction of the high priestess and explain why. And this is my favorite depiction of the high priestess. This is the depiction from the Anna K tarot. And I love this depiction and I think the reason I love it is the simplicity of it. You know, in the right away Smith High Priestess, there's, you know, so many references to like, you know, esoterica and, you know, biblical references and all that kind of stuff. And this one is so simple. And this is a person who, you know, I love how she's seeing the moon phases. You know, she's, she's like, she's getting messages from inside of herself and from, from the natural world and she is perceiving meaning in the world around her in an intuitive way. I love how she's holding the moon in her lap. I love how she's sitting right by the water. Um, and I also, I just think it's a beautiful card. And I, I love how there are no real esoteric elements to this. It's just 
that connection to intuition, that connection to the moon, that connection to cycles, um, and that connection to how we find meaning in the world around us and how we find meaning in nature and how we find meaning in, you know, cosmic cycles. And it, it, it just, it really, to me, conveys the message of the high meaning or the message of the high priestess in a really special way where, you know, it's not about a scroll. It's not about a veil. It's not about pillars. It's, it's just about being in the world, you know, being centered in, in yourself, in your own body, being in the world and have being able to have that intuitive knowledge come to the forefront. So, um, so that's my favorite high priestess is from the Anna K Tarot. So day 12, question 12 is the divination tool outside of tarot that you use the most in 2019. And to be perfectly frank, I don't use a ton of divination tools outside of tarot. Um, I have oracle decks. I use them sometimes. Um, I'm not a super consistent user of oracle decks. Um, I just see myself as more of a tarot reader. That's just like, I am more of a tarot reader. Um, I love the system of tarot. I think that especially in the major arcana, the archetypes of tarot are incredibly potent and they've been potent throughout human history and not to get, like get Jungian about it or anything, but I mean, I think that the archetypes in tarot speak in a unique way to the human condition and human circumstances. And so there's just, you know, when reading with Oracle cards, like there, there's just, and I, I mean, this is just me. This is just my reaction to it. Like this isn't true for everybody necessarily, but there's a depth that I feel in tarot that I don't get really from any oracle deck. Um, there's just, there's something about the long history and um, and like I said, the, the very potent archetypes that um, make tarot just work for me in a way that other divination systems don't. And so I will just always see myself as more of a tarot reader. But so I, I do have oracle cards and I do read with them. I usually use them as an adjunct to a tarot reading as like an extra message or like a summing up kind of kind of thing. You know, sometimes I'll pull just a, a, an oracle card for myself. I almost never do just like a full reading of oracle cards. Um, I also tried uh, Le Normand um, and spent a little time messing around with that uh, last year, but it, it just, it doesn't feel like it has the same kind of breadth as tarot does. Um, so yeah, it just, it doesn't speak to me in the same way. What I am interested in learning about next is runes. Um, I do, I do have an interest in learning about runes. Um, I have a lot of like, you know, Nordic heritage, um, which is unsurprising considering I live in Minnesota. Um, and, and I don't know, there's like a call that I feel to runes. I think that would be very interesting to learn. But, um, but yeah, I mean, frankly, I do use Oracle sometimes, but besides that, I really use tarot as my primary divination system. So the question for day 13 is, uh, where would you like to be with your tarot practice in 10 years? Um, and so for me, you know, I'm at the stage where I, I like reading for other people and I like having, um, uh, a, a regular practice of reading for other people. What I'd really want that to turn into is sort of a more thriving kind of side gig. I think for me, I'm, you know, it's, um, it's, an amb ambition for me to basically make enough money reading tarot to fund my deck buying habit. That's about as much as I want it to be. Like that's my ambition is to just make enough money to pay for my decks. <laughs> so, um, so that's where I would like to be in 10 years, you know, and I'd also just generally like to feel that I was still growing and learning, um, and growing in mastery. Uh, you know, more than anything else, I think that, uh, you know, that's an ongoing process. And in 10 years, I'd like to still feel like I'm discovering new things. So day 14, question 14 is, do you have any tarot tattoos or items of home decor that you would like to share? Um, I have only a couple of things in terms of home decor. So one of my absolute favorite things is my Dirtworks Ceramics Moon Mug. I freaking love this thing. I use it like at least, I don't know, three times a week probably. It's so beautiful. I love the glaze on it. I love how it's like pink and turquoise and the moon's my favorite card. So this one's a really special one. Um, I also just recently managed to get my hot little hands on um, one of the Wedgwood tarot plates. Um, 
and this I had to stalk eBay for this you guys like it was difficult to get an affordable um, one of these so the, this is a plate it was made in the 70s um, by Wedgwood and um, with this tarot design on it it's super cool I actually I collect China like if you look around my house I've got plates on my walls all over the place um, and I actually specifically have a lot of Wedgwood stuff like my mom gives me a Wedgwood ornament for Christmas every year um, and so when I realized that there was actually a, like a um, Wedgwood design uh, tarot plate I had to track one down and it took me months to get an affordable one and I managed to get one just like in the last couple months and so I'm super excited about it. So I need to put a hanger on the back of it and hang it up. Um, but this is my, this is my other thing. I don't have any tarot tattoos, but if I were to get a tarot tattoo, I've said before that the tarot tattoo that I really want is the fish popping out of the cup from the Page of Cups um, that to me is one of my single most favorite um, pieces of imagery in the tarot. I think it speaks to intuition. It speaks to trusting your intuition. It speaks to allowing yourself to be surprised by intuition and um, allow messages to sort of bubble to the surface and trust in them and, you know, let them bring you the information that they want to bring you. Um, and so it's really important to me because I think t learning to trust my intuition and learning to trust those messages and that inner voice is the biggest thing that tarot has taught me. And so, um, so I really do want the, uh, a, a, a tattoo of that image. Um, and there's absolutely no reason why I haven't done it yet. I already have a tattoo. Like I'm not scared of getting tattoos and I just need to get my shit together and make an appointment and go do it anyway. So that's my tarot home decor and potential future, hopefully near future tattoo.